Our agency is focused on creative communication. We're a digital agency and we were founded in 2009. So the birth of social media actually interconnected everyone. It's kind of the nervous system um, to society right now. There's, there's nobody that doesn't have some element of technology in their life and some social profile. And so with that came the opportunity to um, actually humanize brands. For the first time, brands that weren't really acting like people, it was very obvious because people had their own voice and platform to communicate on. So we were really excited about the opportunity um, to work with brands and organizations and initiatives to become as human as possible through this new technology. Love Social is a service-based business, so it's not like we needed a tremendous investment because it's human capital and it's based on the service that you're putting out. So Todd uh, is our only investor and he um, really invested in the human capital of the business that drives us. At the time that we co-founded the company, I was the CEO of Warner Brothers Records in America. And it was interesting, we were dealing as an industry with a lot of the same issues that were affecting businesses, you know, in general throughout the, the world, which is large organizations being challenged by, by new technology, um, by the influence of social media. Um, it, was affecting, it was affecting our, our revenue, um, it was affecting how we were marketing, promoting our products. We were... I think as an industry struggling with how to um, deal with something that was evolving so quickly and changing our business so quickly, um, that happened to dovetail with Azid and I working on this project together and I just thought, wow, this actually addresses a lot of the challenges that, that I know we're facing as a business and I'm sure a lot of other organizations are facing it, you know, as a business. Creating the name Love Social was easy because I didn't know I was creating an agency. It was more of a philosophy and it is what informed our company. The philosophy was that everything, everything is born out of fear and love. Um, that any moment, any thought, any communication, any action is fundamentally rooted from one of these two places. And as it related to advertising, there's a lot of fear-based advertising. So I wanted to make sure that we set our intentions from the beginning, that anything that we put out to the world, anything that we help our clients put out to the world, was going to be rooted in love. I think one of the main services that we provide is helping people find their, their own authenticity. And Azito always talks about the grain of truth, but a big part of what we're doing is helping people to find themselves. It's not one size fits all. Each company has its own personality, its own goals. Helping people figure out how to translate that into a space that a lot of them are, are not comfortable with or are just getting comfortable with is a big part of what we do. One of the reasons I was so excited um, and about creating something was because I really wanted a lateral hierarchy. I think that w that's one of the biggest shifts of our time right now is that there isn't traditional senior leadership um, and that really works because there's value that everybody can provide that necessarily doesn't have to do with 30 years of experience and someone that was creating the agency didn't have 30 years of experience so I think it's less of a leadership role and it's more of an equal value of what everyone has to bring to the table. I don't think about us as a typical advertising and marketing agency. Uh, we use the term creative communications agency and it's really because we're all storytellers and we believe that uh, when we work with the right clients and we set the right kind of environment, we can work on a lot of different projects that pique all of our interests. 
The Love Social services always start with our grain of truth process. That's our proprietary process where we begin with a client no matter which vertical that they work in. Um, we do that first because we think there's an inherent truth in everything and instead of jumping to marketing tactics and campaigns and production, uh, we like to start with what is the inherent value proposition that you bring to the world and then from there we look at our other services that span from campaign creation, influencer cultivation, website production and whatever else you need to kind of bring that story to life. And that can come to life in a lot of different means. It can come to life through an event, through a digital marketing campaign, through a creative seeding campaign, um, but it really all ties back into that unique offering that each client wants to discuss and wants to really rally their consumers as well as their company around. Our competitive advantage of course we bring a lot of skills to the table, but it's really in how we look at a brand and how we approach any kind of campaign or objective, which is as a full human experience. We have a pretty broad spectrum of clients, so they typically fall in a few different categories. The first would be legacy organizations that are um, hoping to come, become more relevant in the digital age. We've been lucky enough to work with the Nature Conservancy and National Public Radio in the past year in really helping them build out uh, a new face and a new look and a new voice for, for their initiative and for their organization. Um, so that's a common thread that tends to run through. Over the last year, we've worked with clients from Nike to Converse to the Tribeca Film Festival to the, uh, running a campaign for Iranian human rights. Um, that's been incredible. When we look at a brand and their objectives and what they're trying to accomplish, we look at them as a person, how they react and engage with their customer or potential consumer, and how everything that they can do can be authentic and therefore really resonate with the community. We want to leave a lasting impression, not an immediate reaction. Last year I worked with the Tribeca Film Festival on the Nas Time is Elmatic documentary, which was uh, the one that they premiered with at the film festival. And we worked with them to pull apart the documentary itself at first and figure out what story the film is telling, and then distribute that through the social channels, building not only awareness, but demand for it to be on theater and um, video on demand. And that was amazing to see because inherently all good marketing strategies are a story. So when you work with a documentary, you're just bringing that to life um, and working on how Nas would actually be, uh, you know, promoting it through his own social channels and developing that editorial calendar. We've never talked about growing for growth's sake. Um, I think we all love working together and we want to continue to do the best work we can. And so we're uh, selective in who we bring on to the team because you have to really work on a personal and professional level and we want to make sure that we maintain a similar dynamic that we have right now. We've created and cultivated an amazing network of uh, talent around us and our clients are so different and call for such different types of talent for each project so um, we really expand and contract according to that. The, the main thing that I've that I've 
seen in the business is that nobody really has the answer as to what's next. It's actually about being fluid. I think as a small, nimble company, we're incredibly fluid. I think we, we are able to iterate and evolve more quickly than our competitors. So whether it ends up being that getting more into platform building and, and DC investing is next, or what, you know whatever kind of challenges we end up having to, to face based on how things change, I think we're just trying to stay on the tips of our toes. The biggest challenges go back to how quickly it's changing, how quickly the industry is moving and all of the updates to all these platforms, especially when it comes to paid media. Our biggest challenge is figuring out how to create advertising campaigns for our clients that are up to date and also scalable. I think the biggest challenge for us is that we've built a business in a very uh, tumultuous landscape. Uh, social media and digital media has changed tremendously since we came to market. One of the major things being that while the channels used to be organic, they're now paid, especially post IPO. So after Facebook and Twitter went public, for example, they put paywalls against everything. So where human beings were naturally connecting and able to find information because they were interested in it, now it's much more difficult to do that so that organic ability to interact has actually been removed for the most part with some of these social platforms but I think it ups the challenge even more for brands and organizations to really get their story right and to really figure out who they're trying to connect to why they're trying to connect to these people and how they're adding value to people's lives I think this year we're going to focus even more on the grain of truth process. Our hope is that um, we, in the next uh, quarter, are going to be actually releasing that for free and allowing people to not only see how we work and what we do, but also just take it and, and build their, you know, their own dream job with it. Uh, I, we are a small team and we can't work with everyone. We can only take on a few clients at uh, any given time. So our hope is that we put out our, our thoughts and, and, and our structure into the world and we allow people to, um, you know, have the same kind of fun that we do. So this is a big thing, um, the, our proprietary process that we've been working with clients on, we've really decided um, all people kind of need to benefit from and all brands and organizations could benefit from. So uh, this year we're going to give it away for free and you can download it yourself and go through the process. The reason that's been really important to us is we think it's a service, we think it's a human service to develop a communication strategy and a marketing strategy from a human level. And if that's the impact that we make, then I think that we've been successful. Thank <laughs> you.